My name is Tammy French. Today we're going to be talking about Chapter 11, which is called Outlining the Speech out of the textbook, The Art of Public Speaking. If you'd like to watch this entire presentation with closed captioning, please visit the Communicate submenu on the UWW-TV website at uwwtv.org. Now, right off the bat, I have to say, please don't be insulted by this chapter. I know you have done outlining many, many times. You've learned how to properly outline in many other classes, probably way back in, in middle school or something like that. But today's chapter is really going to focus on outlining for the speech. We're going to teach you some techniques and some tricks to really help you maximize not just your speech outline, but then consequently your speech delivery. So there's sort of a method behind our madness. Now the first thing to please understand is that there's actually two types of outlines in a speech. The first one is called the preparation outline and you can see this in, in green on your slide. The preparation outline is a full manuscript outline. Okay, It's the one that you're working on uh, that you will turn in and earn 50 points on in this assignment. It's, it's, the, it's the transcript of what you plan to say. It's got everything in it. It's actually quite a very thick document, if you will. It's several pages long, and it's everything that you plan to say. Now, the reason we use a full manuscript speech for this first outline, the preparation outline, is because it makes editing your speech much easier. When you've got everything you plan to say, you can go back and say, hmm, I found out my speech is too long. So I'm going to go look through, and boy, I see I've got four subpoints in this one main point. So I'm going to cut some of that out because I've got so much extra. The preparation outline makes that very, very obvious. Now, in your preparation outline, as I said, you're going to have everything. You're going to have your full introduction, including all of the different pieces of your intro. You're, of course, going to have your main points, which includes your research and your subpoints and so on. You'll even have your transitions. You'll have your full conclusion with all of the different parts. And lastly, you will also have your annotated bibliography. Now, I want to really emphasize this because in the past, sometimes we've had some students that have done their preparation outline and turned it in for a grade, but they have no bib with it. They have no bibliography that they turn in and they said, oh, well, I wrote that up separately. That's a separate document. Not to us, it's not. To us, your bibliography is absolutely part of your outline. So just make sure that gets turned in at the same time. That's just the last page of your outline would be your annotated bibliography. Remember also, as discussed in a previous lecture, that in your introduction, that's going to include, of course, your thesis statement and so on. And you're going to use that number three in your thesis statement. Now, in terms of some guidelines for your preparation outline, remember a couple things, please. Remember that it is everything you plan to say. In other words, it's not a key word outline. I respect and I appreciate the fact that some of you have had communication and speech classes in other, other universities, perhaps, in other high school classes. And it's possible your speech teachers in those places taught you a different kind of outlining. And that's fine. But for us in COM 110, we want you to use a full preparation outline, which is everything everything you plan to say. Uh, we want you to write it out in full sentence form, okay? We want you also in this outline to label everything. Label your transitions, label your conclusions, label where your research is in your speech, for example. The more you label it, the more it jumps out at us and frankly makes it easier for us to grade, but also it's helping you. 
Because when you're done with your outline, you can take a look at it, and then maybe you can have the, the outline rubric on one side, and you can look at the rubric and say, okay, I have to have this, and you can look and easily find it in your outline. So you can use it as a bit of a checklist, and it makes it very easy for you. And again, just another reminder to include your annotated bibliography as part of that preparation outline. Now, one thing I'm gonna emphasize a little bit today is this thing called a visual framework. And all I mean by that is part of outlining, well, outlining has essentially two really critical parts. One is the symbolization. So in, in our case, we're gonna use Roman numerals. And if you use Roman numeral one, Roman numeral two, then you might have a capital letter A, and then a small number one, and then a small letter A, and so on and so forth. I'm not gonna be as picky about the proper order, I guess, of those points and subpoints and everything else, but you do need to have some kind of symbolization. For example, I know that a Roman numeral one is a big part, whether you put your introduction as Roman numeral one or, or maybe one of your main points is Roman numeral one, that is a significant and big piece in your speech. And then the next symbol you use, maybe capital letter A, for example, that is going to be subordinate to that Roman numeral one because of the way we use symbolization. And so that symbolization is one really important piece. The next part is indenting. Indenting the points that are subordinate to one another is also very, very important so that we can visually glance down at our notes and glance up and we know in our head where we are. Indenting is critically important to helping us follow along with our own speech and not get all jumbled up within the content of what we're about to say. Making this pattern consistent is really, really critical. So ultimately, your visual framework of your speech might look something like this. Your main point starts with a Roman numeral, and then you've got some subpoints, and then you have even some sub-sub points in there. But you can see how the symbolization and the indentation really work together to make this speech very, very easy to follow. So this is the preparation outline. Again, this is the outline that you're going to ultimately turn in for a grade. This is the outline that's got everything on it. So your teachers will be able to see very quickly what you have and what you perhaps are missing. I hope not. But you can see it as well. So as you're getting ready to turn in that final copy, you can see very easily what you might be missing and make those corrections before you even do so. This also makes it very easy for us to help you. So if you come in for an office hour or for some extra help, um, we can kind of talk through your outline much, much more effectively. So we've got the preparation outline. The second kind of outline we'll be using is called the speaking outline. Now, in everyday language, we would call the speaking outline our note cards. That's what we'll be using to give our speech on. We're going to take this huge preparation outline that's really sort of kind of like a big research paper, if you will, and we're gonna boil it down. We're gonna chop it up. We're going to use, this time, we're gonna use just keywords and phrases and put that on our note cards. The speaking outline is what we're, just as it implies, this is what we're going to ultimately deliver our speech from. So we don't want to have everything on there because then we'll read it. We'll be much more likely to read it if we simply maybe shrink the font but yet have, have those note cards just as dense. Instead, we want to be very picky and choosy with what words and phrases and little clues for ourselves we put on those cards. So here's some guidelines for you. First of all, and again, this is critical, use the same visual framework from your preparation outline that you used before. So whatever was a Roman numeral one on your big preparation outline, make sure that's a Roman numeral one on your note cards, okay? Secondly, make your speech legible. So most students end up just writing their note cards by hand, which is fine if you've got good penmanship. If for any reason you happen to not have good penmanship, that's okay, no judgment. But then this is the time when maybe you either call on a friend who has good penmanship to give you a hand, or I don't mind at all if you type up your note cards and then kind of cut them out and then maybe just glue them onto some note cards. So in other words, you just have a piece of copy paper and you end up kind of gluing them onto note cards. Some, plenty of students do that as well because then it's nice and neat, it's very legible, it's very easy to see. And then lastly, keep them brief. We're gonna see a sample set of note cards in just a little while, and you'll see how brief they should be. Brevity is our friend in speaking because it helps us look up, it helps us have good eye contact. Even if I know my speech really well, and even if I've practiced a lot, if I've got the crutch of having a really, really jam-packed note card, 
I'm going to be very likely to look down at it. And I don't want that. I'd rather look up and speak. Even if I stumble just a little bit, that's okay. I'd rather have a really, really clear delivery and a really um, honest and spontaneous kind of delivery. Now the other thing that our note cards will do for us, our speaking outline will do for us, is that it will allow us to have some delivery clues, cues in there. Delivery cues are directions to ourself. And it's just what it sounds like. It's something about delivery. So for example, if I know that particularly when I start out and I'm nervous, I don't use a lot of gestures and I tend to talk without my hands, I might write gestures on my note card so that I remember to bring my hands up a little bit. That would be one example. Plenty of students like to also write on their note cards cues for themselves to advance a PowerPoint. Um, click here or something like that. So they make sure they are advancing the PowerPoint correctly. Um, you can write the, your delivery cues, like I said, right on your note cards and just add little things for themselves. Lots of students will do things like highlight certain things in their note cards. Maybe they highlight their sources so that they really make sure they don't forget to say their source material. All of those are really, really good ideas. So next what I would like to do is show you an example. I'm going to show you an example of a preparation outline and a speaking outline and hopefully give you a sense of not only what the difference is between these two, but also the, the start of what a really good one looks like. So the document you're looking at is from a real COM 110 speech. Yes, we got permission from the student to use this. And at first you can see the preparation outline on the left hand side is, is quite dense. There's a lot of material there. And on the other hand, on the right hand side, the speaking outline on note cards was written out in hand and it's much less dense. Okay, so let's start with that preparation outline and, and just take a look at some, a couple of things. Most importantly, what I'd like, well, I shouldn't say most importantly, but one important thing I'd like you to note is that the student used labels. You can see in the introduction, she labeled her attention getter, she labeled her credibility statement and so on. Um, she labeled a whole bunch of things all throughout the speech, which is really, really important. You can see right off the bat she used complete sentences. Her attention getter, September 4th, 2010, a beautifully crisp day that was perfect for the wedding our family was headed to. So written out as, as a complete sentence, which is really, really important. The other thing that you might notice, and, and this will become obvious as we look things over a little closer down the, down the line here, but her speech is very, very informative and not persuasive. And that's something we really want you guys to pay attention to, too. Um, the general purpose of your speech, right, is to inform. And so we're going to make sure we stick to that. As we glance down that introduction a little further, um, the third subpoint there, letter C, is it says reason for audience to listen. We've talked earlier about how important it is to connect to the audience, to make the audience see that my topic and my speech is something you can relate to as well. So her, her um, audience connection is, in my life, this is a day that comes to mind when I think of a day when everything started out perfect and later ended horrendously. Because life isn't perfect, it's likely that most of us have had a day like this. That's her reason to listen. Look. We don't know what she's, what she's gone through exactly yet. She's going to explain that. But we've all had those kind of days, days that started off terrific and ended terribly. And so we can relate to that, even if we haven't gone through exactly what she's gone through. Okay. Now, jumping from the introduction down a little further down into the, the transition, we can see she's got her transition really clearly labeled. And then we move into the body of the speech. And I'd like to take a look at main point one for a second. Main point one is, again, her first main point. When understanding the diagnosis of epilepsy, it is significant to note the difference between epilepsy and a non-epileptic seizure. Then she goes into her first subpoint, where she has her source. And she has her source here. Um, she's got a quote, and then she has Mayo Clinic's article, Epilepsy, last updated in June of 2018. Now, we're going to talk later on about the proper way to cite our sources within our speech, but she does an excellent job. She's got the author, okay, she's got the title of the article, and she's got the date. And those are three of the critical pieces we're going to need. So notice how she writes it in there the way she's going to say it. She doesn't have parentheses, she doesn't have just the author's last name and the date. She's got it written out the way she's going to say it, and that is really, really important. So as we glance at the body, again, we can see she indents, she uses different kinds of symbolization. So her outline is really, really clear. 
When we start with our outlines and when we start this process of practicing, you will start by practicing off of your full sentence outline. And so getting used to the visual framework is important because then we will convert to the speaking outline. So now let's look at the right hand of the page a little bit and look at this speaking outline on note cards. Now the first thing that should jump out at you is that these are chopped up, if you will. You can see she's got attention getter, September 4th, 2010. She's got road trip music and then wedding trade 12 hours. Well, you and I don't know what that means, but she does for two reasons. She knows what it means because it was a, her life experience, but she also knows what it means because she knows her speech. She's practiced her speech a number of times and she knows that she only needs a couple little words and, and phrases to remind her of what to say. So when, what I'm trying to get at guys is that your note cards are very personal. Your note cards are meant for you. And yes, we're gonna ask that you hand them in, but your note cards are not graded specifically. You're not gonna get um, you know, an A or a B on your note cards. If you've written your entire speech onto your note cards, we will downgrade you for that. But if you've, if you've done a good job of, of live, uh, modifying your note cards and kind of abbreviating here and there, then write them as you would like to write them for yourself. Note on this first note card off to the left hand side of the first note card, she has a couple little notes. She's got family, I think it says family pick, and then aware pick. And I think what those two things are, again, they're for her, so I'm not positive, but I think they're clues about the PowerPoint that she's gonna show. I think those are clues to herself to advance the PowerPoint. If we glance down at the second card, you can see at the top of the card she's got the transition, and then she's got a little arrow and a note to herself. Take three steps. Again, we haven't talked yet about delivery, but one thing we will talk about is how we want you to move a little bit on transition. We want you to take a few steps here and there on transition, and she's written this in to remind herself to do that, which is great. She's also got written down uh, off to the left-hand side, breathe, everything's gonna be okay, which is, again, kind of a cute reminder to herself to just calm down. Now this card, I'm gonna be honest, she's written really tiny on some things on this card, but nevertheless, she has still abbreviated. And you can see here, if we glance at letter A, she's got main point one, and then she's got sub point one, and then she's got her Mayo Clinic um, article in there, Mayo Clinic's article, Epilepsy, June 2018. So something as important as a source, again, a critical piece of your, of your speech, you're gonna need to have, have them in there, we want you to have them in there. Make sure that you've got that in there, again, maybe even highlight it to, so you don't forget it, since it's such an important part. And glancing down at the rest of those note cards, again, she's done a good job of writing neatly for herself, leaving herself some cues. And after she's practiced her preparation outline a couple times, she can certainly transition to practicing on her note cards a couple times. So now if we take just a moment and look at both of these together, the preparation and the speaking outline together in one document, you can see on one side how dense that preparation outline is, and this is all of our plans of what we're gonna say. And then glancing to the other side, you can see, boy, that speaking outline is much thinner. There's m many fewer words on those cards, and that's okay. They keep the same visual framework. So when I practice with one and then I transition and start practicing with another, it's gonna come much easier. But the other thing is, is the more you work with your speech, the more you're gonna sort of inherently absorb some of the information you're working with. And so it's going to roll off of your tongue and it's gonna to be top of mind much more so than it would be if you hadn't worked with your speech much or you hadn't practiced with your speech very much. So that transition to um, converting over to no cards is, is probably gonna come much easier than you think it will. So all in all, these examples of, of these outlines, I hope this has been encouraging for you. You can find the full example on Canvas and look a little closer at those. But it's really, really important that if you're not clear on what we're looking for with the outline, you ask us and you get some extra help. Now there's one more thing I wanna show you. I want you to pretend for a second that I don't know, maybe a friend in class came up to you and said, hey, my speech is tomorrow, but I wanna show you my note cards. What do you think? What feedback would you give someone about these note cards? These were honestly the note cards that I collected from someone who gave a speech. If you can't read it, that's okay because I could barely read it either and frankly, I don't think the student could either. You'll notice that these note cards are so densely written 
that it's really, really difficult to deliver a speech from. There's no symbolization and there's no indentation. So if the speaker should happen to glance up and make some eye contact with his or her audience, they would be have a very difficult time glancing back down and finding their place again, correct? But then the other thing is, what are the odds that the student read this speech? I would say the odds are pretty high because you're gonna to have to in order to keep your place. We would lose our place otherwise. So folks, please don't, don't use uh, cards like this because it's only gonna hurt you. Yes, you may have every word you wanna say in front of you, but it's gonna really detract from your delivery. Frankly, I think it's gonna make you more nervous than if you just practice your speech a lot and get to know it. So again, this chapter on outlining has gone over some things that you probably have known a lot of, but because there's a specific way we want you to do the assignments in our class, we wanted to spend a little time explaining that. If you have any questions or concerns about either your preparation outline or your speaking outline, aka your note cards, you should definitely follow up with your teacher and ask those questions. In the meantime, uh, if you want to watch this entire presentation with closed captioning, please visit the Communicate submenu on the UWW-TV website at uwwtv.org. Thank you.